this it's a carbon monoxide propane alarm and it reminded me of a very important thing that I found out about these when we were buying them and I'm going to share that with you right now. My name is Randy with bestoftheinterstate.com and rvparked.com where we film some videos about how to keep you on the road longer and keep you safe and going with the keeping safe aspect of things I'm going to show you how this little thing here is going to kill you one day. Um, and that might be a little direct, but it's meant to get your attention because it's very important that you know some of these tricks about um, these carbon monoxide and propane alarms that you might think are working, but they actually aren't. So when we first purchased the RV, I did some research on these carbon monoxide and propane alarms. And because, you know, safety of the cats and Meredith are top priority with me. You have to always assume that this is the same one that you got that was installed. Um, this is the same one that was installed with the original purchase of the RV. Um, and I went online and I did some reading. When you hit the test button, and this might be true with some of the older smoke detectors as well, the test button is merely a button that bridges the gap and between two wires. So imagine two wires going from the audible alarm on this smoke or on this carbon monoxide detector. So the thing that makes the beep, this button is only testing that. So when you hit the button, it might sound good, flash some lights. All the wires are working, you know, sounds great, works. I'm gonna sleep nice and soundly with my family tonight. But what they don't tell you is that the sensor, I'm not, I don't care about the audible alarm, that's nice, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy, but the sensor in here that detects propane goes bad. And I don't know what the exact year is. A good, I, I would say replace it every five years, you know? Even if it says it's good for 10, replace it after every five. It's 30 bucks, you know? Or in this case, it's 100. I think these are 100, they overcharge for these. But I'm gonna show you this. This is a date that it was manufactured. That makes it currently over, 13 years old. This needs to be replaced. What I also did, what I also did was I put a propane um, torch without lighting it. I put a propane torch right next to this thing and to try it out. And I did that immediately when I got home. And when I found out it didn't work, I went and bought another one. I still have this one here just as you know because it's there but um, I want to and I'm gonna show you the other one that I bought and it's right over my shoulder but I'll, I'll go get the propane right now I'm gonna show you that even though this thing makes noise and flashes and lights up like a skee-ball machine I wouldn't trust it so here's the propane torch here it says propane right there right and how these work is you would turn the gas on here, it goes down the tube, you hit the little ignition here, and it lights the propane, and then you have your, yourself a ye old fire starter, just like how they used to do it in the old days. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the propane on, you'll be able to hear it, and I'm gonna put it right next to the sensor and uh, see if it goes off. It probably will to make it lighter out of me. Now keep in mind, I just put a whole bunch of propane right next to the sensor. In reality, 
your propane leak is going to be coming from the kitchen or the underbelly of your RV. So it's not going to be as prevalent, but it still might build up in your RV without this thing even knowing. So I'm going to put some more propane to it. I'm going to open up a window. Okay. You can actually see, watch it. What can I? To prove to you that there's propane coming out, this is a cat's toy. I'm gonna put this right here. And it's gonna fall over from me opening up the propane. If I can get it open. Alright, one more time, that just fell over from the propane. I'm going to probably pass out if I do any more, so I'm not going to do any more. But this thing's junk, and if you rely on it, it's going to kill you. So what I did was I got one of these kitty uh, carbon monoxide and explosive gas alarms. This does a lot more explosive gases than that does. Uh, this plugs into the outlet, but it also has a nine volt battery backup. Um, I trust this a lot more than I trust that. I was just putting propane to the propane alarm and it didn't do diddly. What you wanna make sure is that it's still below the sleeping quarters of where we, where we sleep in, in the bed. It's below that, so as it rises, you know, we can actually try this one. All right, so propane next to this. All right. See, it's not even letting me reset it because it's not happy. It's reading 218 parts per million. Is that what that is? Anyway, that did a lot better job than that. And that's why I have this in here. Uh, it's got a battery backup on the back. This will save your life, the other one will kill you. So just invest $40 in one of these, go to, go to Menards, go to Walmart, and uh, it'll make you sleep a lot easier at night knowing that you, uh, all the propane connections when you're taking the motorhome down the road and it's rattling and vibrating, uh, if something does come loose and it leaks overnight, uh, you're going to wake up the next morning. So um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, stay safe. Go to bestoftheinterstate.com. That's bestoftheinterstate.com to find the best interstate destinations. Um, I'm going to move out of the RV because it smells like propane and uh, I'm getting a little dizzy. So I will see you at the next exit.